Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to breadboards and also an introduction to the digital multimeter, specifically looking at continuity measurements. And we'll use continuity measurements to kind of poke around on the breadboard and see actually what's happening. Okay, so this is a breadboard. I have a picture of it uh, on the left of the screen. <clears throat> and then this is my breadboard right here. And I have some annotations on here that kind of show you what... Uh, what these things are but a breadboard is used to prototype circuits so uh, it's usually used for uh, for larger components so not the stuff that you see on like really small printed circuit boards but it is used to kind of test circuits out uh, prior to building a printed circuit board and actually soldering them together so it has a variety of holes on it that allow you to place in uh, parts and basically wire them up and make sure your circuit works before you try to manufacture them so let's go through kind of the main concepts of a breadboard. Okay, so each of the holes on a breadboard are designed to take a jumper wire. And so if you see, you have a kit right here, usually these come with, uh, you know, come with your breadboard. And what these are is they're just little little wires that you, are, that you can place inside of these holes. And so if you take one of these, you can see that it's stripped on one end, and uh, these are just called breadboard wires, jumper wires sometimes. <clears throat> and you'll see that it's got insulator on there, and then it's got like the exposed metal. And what you do is you just take that and you pop it right into a hole. Okay, and so then that allows it to hold the wire and you can wire that to different locations on the breadboard. Okay, uh, one thing I'll tell you is I, it's very, these, all these parts are really small. So a needle nose pliers will be your best friend when you mess with a breadboard because you can pick things up and you can place, you know, place things into a hole a little bit easier. Uh, okay, <clears throat> these right here. So then the way that this works is you have uh, these holes right here. This is kind of the main thing. These are called terminal strips. And so you see you got one, two, three, four, five in a horizontal fashion. These five holes are connected to each other, okay? And they are all connected, one, two, three, four, five, uh, these horizontal rows. <clears throat> but they're not connected to anything else. So like these five are not connected to those five and they're not connected to the ones below them or the ones below it or the ones below it, okay? So that allows you to do things like come in and say, okay, I'm gonna put you know a wire right here and so, okay, and then if I wanted to do connect it to another wire, I could do something like this. And these two points are connected. So that wire from here goes over to here, goes through the terminal strip, and then it's connected to there. Okay, so that's how this works. <clears throat> uh, but it's not like this. So like, for example, if you did that, that one on top, the red is not connected to the one on the bottom, which is the brown. Okay, so that's just how it works. <clears throat> okay, so you have the terminal strips. That's the first key concept. The second concept is the uh, power rails. So if you look along the sides, you're going to have these uh, hor or these vertical bars that are labeled with red and blue. And the way that these work is the entire red vert or horizontal or excuse me vertical strip is connected. So for example, this point right here is connected to this point right here within the breadboard. Okay. And what that allows you to do is that you could potentially like put in a voltage there, like let's say a nine volt, and you could tie it into that, that pin right there, that hole right there, and then it would allow you to get access to that nine volts down here where you might have a circuit. Okay. So that's kind of the whole idea of a power rail. The red <clears throat> is not connected to other reds unless you do that. So at, if this breadboard was empty, this red strip right here is not connected to this red strip. It's not connected to this red strip. It's not connected to this red strip. Same thing with the blue. This blue is not connected to this blue, not connected to this blue, etc. But the blue, of course, op operates the same way. It's this, this uh, vertical strip. These are all connected together, all these holes. Now, one of the first things that you do with breadboards usually is you wire, I, well, I do this, I wire all the reds together. And you can see I did that by coming up here <clears throat> and I put a little jumper wire from this red hole right here, the, the highest hole on this little vertical strip, and I jumper wired it up to here. So what that did is it connected all these holes on this red power rail to all the holes on this power rail, and then that allowed me to then, I jumpered them down to the reds here, and the reds here, here, and here. So now every red on this breadboard is connected together with the exception of course of this one up here. So that means I can bring in like a voltage and I can just distribute it across the entire board. 
Okay, <clears throat> same thing with blue. Usually you use blue for what we call ground, and you don't need to know what that is right now, but you can just think about like if you have a nine volt battery, you've got a plus and a minus. So usually you put the plus on the red, and it's actually labeled plus, and then you put the minus on the, the blue, and it's labeled minus, okay? Okay, so that's the power strip. Uh, binding posts are, I don't have them installed on here, but basically they're like these, uh, these twist on uh, connectors that you can then plug cables into. And then if you wanted to wire them to your breadboard, you'd have to like, you'd have to like put in uh, a wire between there and wherever you wanted to go. But sometimes people will do that in, in order to like j put cables into their board and then just have jumper wires that come over here. Okay, so that's the binding post. <clears throat> and then finally, you have the ravine. So there's like this ravine, this channel right here that there's no connectivity. But the reason that that's there is because there's a certain part uh, a very common package is called a dual inline package and you'll you'll work with a lot of these as you start building like digital circuits and looking at op amps and stuff like that and this part right here it's it's designed to go into a printed circuit board of course but it'll actually take this part exactly so you can pop that in there and then what that allows you to do is say okay if i want to access that pin I can just jump her to there. And if I wanna access this pin right here, I can jump her to there. Oh, and if that happened to be power and I needed to do to grab like nine volts or whatever, I could jump her into my power rail. <clears throat> so that's kind of the basic concept of a breadboard and how it works. Next, let's look at a very useful piece of test equipment that electrical, electrical engineers use all the time, which is called a digital multimeter. So this is a digital multimeter and these come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, and what they do is they measure electrical quantities, okay? Now, <clears throat> the term digital multimeter, so digital just refers to the fact that it takes the measurement in a digital form and it also displays it in a, in a digital form. So when I turn this on, you'll see digital values. So if I come over here, you see digital numbers. Uh, that's as opposed to a one that would like have a little needle or something that is, is an analog representation of the voltage. So digital is the way that most of these were, almost all of them anymore. Uh, a meter is something that measures something, and then it's a multimeter because it measures different functions. So you can measure di all sorts of different electrical quantities. So voltage, AC voltage, DC voltage, current, uh, resistance, etc. cetera. Uh, like I say, these come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, and they all basically kind of look the same. I mean, they all act the same. So here's like a larger one, and you'll notice that it's got this function dial on it. Well, so does the bigger one right here. Uh, the difference between these is it's just like anything. You can pay for more features. It might have more measurements. It might have more accuracy. Uh, some people want big ones. Some, some people want small ones. Here's a handheld one that you can put in your pocket. This one's just extremely tiny, uh, very inexpensive. Doesn't measure current, but it does do voltage and it does do most of the functions. But you'll notice it's kind of the same thing. It's got the little selection wheel and then just a few different options in terms of uh, what it can do. And then finally, here's, here's yet another one that's kind of the same similar size and cost point of this one. So they're all very similar. Uh, and they all kind of work the same way. So here's what, here's how you use them. First and foremost, you have to decide what you want to measure. Okay. So in this situation, we let's start with something very, very simple, which is going to be continuity. And that refers to whether or not there's an electrical connection between two points. And so it's always down here. You're always going to see this thing, a little uh, beep kind of it looks like a, almost like a little pattern of beeping right there. That's going to be your continuity. And it's also, it's also always with the little diode symbol, so the triangle with a line on it. But this is the, the continuity setting. And what you do to put it in that mode is you simply switch this over, and now it's in continuity mode and the display comes on. And so the way that this works, they usually have like a kickstand behind here and you can, you can do something like that. Uh, and then what you have is you have different positions for the leads. And so you're always gonna have, almost all voltmeters have three places to plug in your leads. Some have four, but these cables are called your test leads. Okay, so these are basically how you make electrical contact of things. So you, when you're probing, you're probing is when you're touching something and measuring it. So then what happens is that you plug these into these holes, 
but it depends which measurement you're doing. So for continuity, you'll notice that it wants to have, uh, it basically wants to go between COM, which stands for common or ground, and then over here is where you're gonna measure voltage, resistance, milliamps, and has a signal uh, signal generator. So I, I know that the it's always the same connection as the ohms or the resistance on there. So just remember continuity always shares with the voltage and ohm or res ohm signal right there. And so now you're in continuity mode. Uh, the way that it works is now to test it, one of the first things you always do to make sure the thing works is you touch these together and make contact and then you'll hear a beep. Okay, so that one is, it works, okay? It's very quiet though. Uh, if you look at like other ones, so like if I use this one right here, and I came over here and I said, let's put it into continuity mode, you see down there, and then I touch the leads together. Much louder, so that's much louder. So anyway, this one that, that uh, I'm showing you just is really quiet, okay? All right, so there you have it. So that's what we're, that's continuity. Um, I'll just go around really briefly. We'll have we'll have other videos that kind of cover exactly what's going on in here. But if you look at this thing, voltage is up here. Okay, so voltage is it's a V, and then if it has a flat line, that means DC voltage, which means for direct current, and it just means that it's uh, a constant voltage, so like nine volts coming out of a battery. Uh, when you get over into here, when you have the V and then the squiggly line, the tilde, that refers to AC voltage. So that's going to be voltage that alternates with time uh, sinusoidally. And that's what you might see if you put this into like a, the, an outlet in the wall. Then down here, when you see the ohm, that's going to measure resistance. And then the A is going to be current. And so notice with current, this particular meter only has A. for It stands for amps. And then it's got the flat line. That means it only measures DC amperage. Okay, they all have continuity. This one actually has a signal generator on it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but to to measure AC current, you'd have to go to a more expensive uh, DMM. So notice on this one, it's got oh here's your you know your AC current there. Okay, this one actually has a power switch that you turn it on with. Okay, life is good now. So now let's do this. Let's take some continuity measurements on our breadboard and kind of prove to ourselves that everything we just talked about is accurate. So we should be able to just go in here and we should be able to go in here and measure some continuity on this little breadboard. Okay. So first and foremost, one of the things you're going to run into is that these test leads are too big. Okay. They're too big to actually poke into these holes. So what you have to do is you have to actually use jumper wires in order to make contact with it. So let me, let me pop this thing out of here and get it out of there. And then, so what I would have to do is I'd have to say, okay, if I want to know the continuity between, you know, two things, okay, I would have to actually use a jumper wire in order to make contact with it. So let's do, let's do an example where, uh, let's see here. What if I wanted to come in here and I wanted to do a measurement between like uh, position two and four. Let's see. Now let's do five and six because I already used those. So I'm going to come up here. I already got that one. Let's go right next to five. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to take another wire and I'm going to go over and it's about which position is it? So it's like one, two, it's like right there. Okay, so these two should be connected. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch them with, uh, I'm gonna actually just hold my fingers on there. And you can hear that it works, okay? Hopefully you can hear that. I'll put that over by the microphone so you can hear it a little bit. Okay, so there's contact between those. Now that proved to me that that actually works. However, uh, it kind of was a, it kind of wasn't that great actually having to hold that with my uh, fingers. So let's look at another way that we can do that. So they make these things called alligator clips, which allow you to clip onto wires uh, so that you don't have to actually hold on to them. And they call them alligator clips because, you know, it's like, Arr. so you got this little thing. Uh, they come in different sizes though. So like this one is a little bit larger one. It has a larger diameter hole that you would plug your uh, cable into. These test leads are usually really, they, they're a common size, they're smaller. And so you have to get, uh, 
alligator clips that are designed for test leads. So when you go look for something like this, you have to get alligator leads for, for test, alligator clips for test leads. So that one right there is exposed. Um, you can get them with these rubber casings on there. And the reason they do that is because then you don't have the, you don't accidentally like touch something with metal because that, that rubber will act as an insulator. So if you were accidentally trying to measure that, you could short something out on your board. Uh, so with these ones, these are okay because they insulate it, but you have to actually, you have to actually look in there and make sure that you're going to connect them. Uh, <clears throat> so then there's the red, or excuse me, there's the black, and then there's the red. And what I can do is then I can just clip on to that guy, and that'll just hands-free measure it. So then I don't have to worry about holding it anymore. And then when I clip onto here, now I've got my continuity. And if you want to take these, if these things are kind of bulky and you want to take them off, you can just... You can pull them out. Uh, you almost like grab it with another alligator clip, and then just you just gently pull it out of the rubber casing, and they'll pop right out. And then you can have the exposed one. And sometimes it's a little easier, whatever you want to do. Uh, so that is now alligator clips, and that is how you use <laughs> alligator clips to do hands-free measurement. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Uh, now, after watching this video, you should have an understanding of the functionality of a breadboard and what a DMM or digital multimeter is and how to make continuity measurements. Nice work. We'll see you.